When I was first building my career in the arts, I spent a lot of time in art galleries and museums. I remember traveling to Berlin once and spending the whole day in an arts district. I walked past gallery after gallery, terrified to push the doors open and actually go in because I felt like if I walked into that gallery, the person sitting behind the desk would judge me. They were scary to enter. I also remember a particular gallery here in Minneapolis. This was about 10 years ago, but I went to an opening reception and in the middle of the gallery, there was a bucket. And inside the bucket, there was a piece of wood. And everyone in the gallery was standing around, looking at this bucket with the piece of wood, collectively validating its value with their attention. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And to this day, I don't actually doubt the validity of that artwork, but I do have concern about the way I felt in that space. I felt like I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't maybe educated enough, I felt like I wasn't in the know in order to understand the secret of the bucket. There was no good reason why I should have felt intimidated in gallery spaces. Actually, I was building a career in contemporary art. I was working directly with artists. Perhaps it was because my path was self-paved as opposed to accompanied with a degree in art history. But even so, there was no reason why I should have felt intimidated. And I thought about it. I thought about the fact that if I felt like that in those spaces, what would other people with even less familiarity feel like? Whoops, you don't get to see that yet. <laughs> As a curator today, I talk to people about how they feel about art. And even the most intelligent people will tell me contemporary art is over their head. Even the most creative and interesting, expressive people will say that art spaces are not made for them. Most people will embarrassingly say they know nothing about, about art, which is crazy. We all know everything about art, trust me. The fact that contemporary art alienates people and makes them feel less than breaks my heart. Contemporary art by nature is art of the present moment. It is art about the experiences we are having as a collective society today. The very nature of contemporary art requires the audience in order to give it meaning. It questions the limitations of art. Anything can be art, even a bucket with a piece of wood in it. I'm interested in exploring the possibility of reclaiming spaces for art. Because art is not elitist. Art is not pretentious. Maybe buying art is pretentious and elitist because it's super expensive and you need huge walls, but Art itself, viewing art, appreciating art, is not pretentious. But I will argue that the people and the spaces that are presenting contemporary art are using a gatekeeper mentality. And they are okay with the fact that most of us feel bad around art. Spaces take shape, and those shapes make us comfortable. Your mother's home, the home you grew up in, your best friend's apartment, your favorite coffee shop, spaces that are familiar give us identity. Spaces that are familiar make us comfortable. So my ideas around creating space are inspired by the circumstances of my life, which has actually been this constant negotiation of my identity through various geographical spaces. So I was born in Bangkok, Thailand. Now you can see this to a Thai mother and an American father. Through his privilege of citizenship, I became by default an American. Think about that one. And his, his career in education led us to my childhood in the Middle East. So I grew up as an American growing up in Egypt. The international school I went to validated that identity. All the kids I went to school with were either born abroad or also mixed race or understood international identity. 
But as we know too well, the measure of American identity is often more narrow than it should be. And so when I moved to the US for college for the first time, my Americanness came into question, probably because of my mixed race ambiguity, the color of my skin, my connection to Egypt. But either way, I had a really hard time explaining who I was. I had a really hard time seeing my myself in the spaces that I was in. And so I started looking for some kind of comfort. For me, art has answers, and art makes visual the inexplicable. So I started spending time in museums and art galleries, art spaces. So I had a particular experience, an art experience, that really changed my perspective on art. It really changed the way I thought about art and the way I saw myself in art. I was wandering through MoMA in New York City, Museum of Modern Art, and I came into this room, and there was framing all around the room. It was, it was messy, there were boxes in the corner. Um, there wasn't any art on the wall. And it smelled like curry. It smelled really good. I was confused at first. I was like, am I in the cafeteria of the, of the museum? Am I still in the gallery spaces? And it turned out that this was actually all intentional. And what was on display was an installation by a Thai contemporary artist named Rirkrit Tiravanija. He's a really big deal in the art world, but at the time I was young and self-educating, so I didn't know anything about him. I just knew that he was a Thai artist in a museum, and that made me feel really excited. So soon a man who was dressed as a chef came out, and he started dishing up Thai rice and curry. And so I saw people getting in line, so I got in line, and all of a sudden I'm sitting there, and I'm eating Thai curry in a museum with a bunch of strangers. <laughs> It was delicious. <laughs> for Rickrit, he was creating a prompt. The curry was a prompt for people to feel familiar in that space, for people to feel familiar with strangers. The point is that art requires participation. What he was trying to say was that we can imagine this space as something different, perhaps if we participate in it, if we are present in it. Rickrit created a space that I could find myself within. He actually made a space within the museum that reflected an art world that he wanted to see. He didn't put a piece of wood in a bucket and walk away. Instead, he offered us comfort and warmth and curry and then left the rest up to us. So there was another part of this installation that I understood on a personal level. In Thai culture, there is a word called Nam Jai, and it translates to generosity. But literally, the words mean water heart. It's an understanding that in order to be generous, the love and care of your heart pours out of you like water. At the center of Rickrit's installation, was Nam Jai. His work is provocative, but it's also very accessible for people. For me, it was deeply personal. For me, it was home. It was my culture. It was my mother. And in that space, I felt really comfortable. But what I learned from Rickrit that day, I already knew from my mother. In order to be welcoming, you have to be generous. The art world today is comprised of so many spaces that are not generous. The art world today is composed of spaces that benefit some people over others. It is composed of spaces that have hierarchical structures, that have ethical contradictions, that have colonial objects. The art world today does not reflect most people. I have no doubt that this art world is no longer relevant. I have no doubt that it is our time to build a new one. At this very moment, there are powerful artists who are developing artwork and creating truth. This artwork represents diverse cultures, races, genders, perspectives, and none of this art requires an art history degree to understand. 
What this art requires is spaces that are generous. So how does one begin to create a new vision for art space? You start with what you know. You start with your truth. I create space in the way that my mother cooks Thai food, with love, with generosity, with Nam Jai. My truth is that I was raised between countries and cultures, where I learned that understanding comes from familiarity. And something can only be familiar if it feels like life. So in 2012, I opened an art space here in Minneapolis called Public Functionary. And it claims by its very name that it functions for the people, for the general public. And in this space, we show work that is highbrow and lowbrow, but mostly completely random. We show artists that have museum quality work. We show artists that are emerging and from the local community. We challenge our own understandings of art in order to understand what art can be. Most of all, in this space, we search for truth and we search for humanity in artist stories. We do not use language that is alienating. We do not make anyone feel like they don't understand art. We do not make anyone feel like they can't do anything they really want to do in this space. There is really no limitation. In so many ways, this is an art gallery, but it is also a community living room. I should mention that gallery where I saw the bucket with the wood in it, I looked everywhere for a program, a booklet, a wall tech, something where I could gain some insight into the artist's story. There was nothing. There was no point of entry, intentionally. The answer is not to push our way through these spaces, these spaces that exclude. These spaces are made for certain communities that see themselves within them. But these communities are small and exclusive. The answer is to create even new, even bigger new spaces for the rest of us, for those, for those of us that want to see ourselves in something different. We all deserve to function in this world as fully engaged human beings. Art should never make us feel less than that. There are many spaces around the country like Public Functionary. We are one of many. These spaces are popping up in different cities. There are grassroots movements to start alternative art spaces. Alternative. They are not on the side to the mainstream art world. If you support these spaces, if you support spaces, art spaces that make you truly feel welcome, they will become the center. It is my role as a curator in this new art world to tell you there's no secret to the bucket. But there is a lot that you can learn from Thai curry. And it's been my privilege to share it with you. Thank you.